Hey dolls, welcome back here to Sharon's Nail Boutique. If you're new here, definitely smash that subscribe button. Or better yet, wait till the video is over and subscribe if you like. But I would definitely appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel so you can see all my future videos coming out because I'm only getting better and better. So as you can see here, I am using my No Lift Nails Acid Base Primer. I've already gone in with my OPI Bond Aid with my one coat of that. And I go in with two coats of my No Lift Nails Acid Base Primer. Now, as you can see, you only need very, very little. I dab my brush out on my napkin be before I use it on the nail plate. Because you do not need a lot. A little of this stuff goes a very long way. I know I have several, several clients and a bottle of this stuff lasts me probably a few months or more. So you literally only need the smallest amount. You don't want to flood your client's cuticles or nails with this stuff because it is a chemical. Now I'm just going in with my thin clear base. This is a redesign and a few of her nails actually came off. So um, I actually had to go back in with new tips and do a fresh set on those ones there was only a couple because she's had these on for over a month so she's banged them around quite a bit and stuff like that so the couple of nails I was able to salvage I left on uh, but most of these were fresh tips so I think I was only able to salvage like two nails pretty sure two or three but, um, yeah, I mean, my clients don't get lifting. Like, if it's been, like, up to a month, usually they have little to no lifting. Anything over that, I never recommend. I tell my clients every two weeks because anything after two weeks, I can't, you know, tell you, oh, it's going to stay on past two weeks because I don't recommend, recommend anything past two weeks just because of lifting, mildew, all of that stuff combined will definitely lift your nail up and off so I do all my prep work the way I'm supposed to I use my 100 180 grit on the natural nail itself to remove the shine never use your machine with a standing band to remove the shine that's too rough I don't care how slow the setting is it is too rough someone's hand does not have a motor in it. The machine has a motor in it, which means it has torque, which means it has horsepower. Someone's natural hand doesn't have horsepower or torque in it. So I don't know how people could go around saying it's the same thing because it's not. It is absolutely 100,000% not the same thing. The science will tell you that. I mean, we naturally don't have motors in our hands. We naturally move our hands the fastest probably maybe a mile an hour but when you have a machine that has 25,000 or 35,000 rpms in it that's a lot different than somebody's hand just saying so anybody that believes that your machine is the same thing as someone's hand you need to go back to school honestly and I'm not trying to be rude but that's just straight ignorance if you actually believe that so I am just finishing up here, putting that small amount of acid-based primer. As you can see, I use it on all five nails with just one dab into my bottle and I tap off excess onto my paper. I'm going in here with my Glam and & Glitz and this is in the color Boardwalk and this is from their color collection. As you can see, I hold her nail downward so that the gravity naturally pulls that product down now this nail itself her cuticle is actually shaped really really weird it's round up near the right edge but then when you come over to the left it like slants all the way down as you can see if you look at it really close up at that cuticle look at how it like slants down so it's not a even circular cuticle it's circular halfway and then it slants diagonally so I have to work my way around that and just you know lay it as flush as I possibly can and then when I come in with my file I can perfect how flush it is 
obviously you don't want to lay your acrylic too thick and bulky in your cuticle area I am making sure that I am thinning that out and then I'm pulling that down to the stress area and then I will go in with another bead at that free edge area just to make sure I have a even surface and make sure that the structure is built nice and sound. You know, over time you get used to your brush and the way it works and how much liquid you need in it, how much product you pick up. All that comes in time. You don't get that on your first try. You know, if I were to show you pictures from when I first started to now, what a big difference but that's like with anything you know anything worth achieving takes a lot of hard work and practice it's like I teach my kids nothing worth having in life is gonna be easy to obtain you know a lot of stuff worth having it, it's gonna be hard to reach it and that's what makes it all the more worthwhile having you see what I'm saying so I wait for my bead of acrylic to polymerize on my brush and then I place it down making sure that my cuticle area is nice and flush and then I will pull the rest of that down over the nail as you can see I am using my brush to my advantage making sure that my brush is wet and that I am pulling the product where I need it and I'm turning my brush to the side when I get to those sidewall areas you don't want a big block for a nail. Seriously. That's not pretty. So I'm just making sure my side walls are neat. This nail in particular is tricky because of how her cuticle is shaped. But we get there in the end and that's all that matters. So I'm just checking the shape of it, making sure that, you know, when I come into cap, I'm not gonna have too much of a hard time. And I go in on her thumb with boardwalk as well. That's why I'm doing the boardwalk nails first and then I'll go in with the glitter nail and then I'll do black at the very end because of how dark of the color black is. I just don't wanna do those nails and then come into my purple and still have black on my brush, so just pushing this up to the cuticle making sure it's flush and even and then I will pull the rest of the product down making sure that the nail is covered properly and that I have my product where I need it if I have excess I usually place it back up near the cuticle and pull the rest down works to your advantage that way you don't have too much waste, you know? If you could still manage it and the bead is still wet enough, then I definitely, and you know what you're doing with it, I definitely recommend it. That way you don't have too much waste. Um, however, I wouldn't recommend doing that if you are a beginner and you don't really know how to play with your bead yet. Um, I'm comfortable at this point in my career to do that and still be able to mold it and move it around the nail. Um, but like I said, I don't recommend that for people that are just starting out. So I'm just cleaning my brush out. I want to make sure that I have enough product everywhere I need it here. Um, I might add a little bit more to the free edge. I'm not sure. I kind of wish I would have left it like that and just came in and capped. Um, but I think I add a little bit more to the free edge, if I'm not mistaken. So I don't know, let me let me know what you ladies and gents have uh, been thinking about my channel and um, the footage that I've been uh, bringing to you guys because I know some of it is needs to be worked on, but um, for the most part, I feel like you know I've come a long way. In my editing and my videos and I just I'm really happy to be able to be doing more nails for you guys and really bringing my channel to where I wanted it originally I mean originally it was supposed to be all about nails but 
somehow I got drawn into the glitter world and <laughs> the crafting world and all that good schnaz. So I think I just leave this nail after this and I'll come back and cap it. I might add a little more to the top just to make sure that you can't see that like line where I blended it up. So I only add a little bit because I don't need a lot and I apologize for being out of focus. I did not realize how badly I was out of focus there. So moving on, I am doing this glitter nail and this purple holographic extra fine glitter, um, it's a mix that was made by Made to Glitter. And I think it's called purple something, but it's an extra fine, the 0 .005, which is like the more expensive ones. But they're so extra fine, they're like a powder. Um, so that's what I'm going in with. And then I actually take um, a mix that was made by Nail Art Queen. And I believe it's called Firefly. But I used that over the top of this and it just made it stand out so pretty. Let me go see if I could find the names of those glitters so I could share it with you. That way if you're able to and she still has some that she's selling, you already know the name and you can request it. So now I'm going in with Nail Art Queen's glitter there. And yeah, that glitter is called Firefly and it is freaking gorgeous. I'm gonna see if I could pop in a picture of it, just the mix itself at the end. There's so many cool goodies in here. There's the um, the fantasy butterflies. She has the fantasy dots in here. Um, tinsel, extra fine. So many pretty, pretty uh, colors and goodies in there. Wait till you see it after I add it to the nail. I'm gonna go, see, I'm dipping into the bag and I take some and I start like just spreading it out over the nail. I wanted to like make that nail stand out even more. And this glitter definitely did that. It like took it up a whole extra notch. So, so pretty. Just making sure that, you know, my side walls are neat and clean. Making sure there's not too much bulky glitter on there so where I can't cap. There's a lot of metallic tinsels in here too. And now I'm going in with the black and this is by Color Club. Now they are dip powders originally, but you can use them as acrylics because it's literally the same stuff. You know, black is a very dark pigmented color so you have to be careful when working with it. So yeah, that glitter mix is called Firefly and it was handmade by Nail Art Queen. She has gorgeous, gorgeous mixes. And the purple one is Summer Night Fling. And it's an all extra fine glitter made by Made to Glitter Cookie. I think that's the name. Cookie here. So that's a really, really pretty. Um, it's got some chunky bits in it, but they're like 1 mm in size. And you can't really tell. It's, I mean, that's how fine it is. So, just get a lid for the top part I've made a few new mixes I, I might be bringing back mix it up Monday I haven't fully decided yet um, but I'm definitely interested in it I just you know I've been going through a lot lately so I don't know I'll definitely be thinking about it just finishing up with the color club black here um, these are actually the Color Club Serendipity sets, and I just use them as colored acrylic because I don't really get clients that come in here and be like, oh, I want to do a dip 
set. Usually it's just the acrylic or the gel, you know, which mostly I do acrylic. I do gel, I have gel, I just don't have a lot of clients that request it. Um, so yeah, I just finish up with the black. Um, and these black nails are actually going to be covered at the end with the chameleon chrome, the one that shifts from like the purple to the forest green to the navy blue type. So that's what she wanted because she found a set that kind of looked like this and that's what we went with. It looked really, really good at the end and I was so happy with the way it turned out. It really, really came out really good. Um, so I'm just making sure that the nail is opaque and I have black everywhere I need it. And then I move on. And I move on to capping the nails, I believe, after this. Let me know what you guys think about the length of the videos, if they're too long, if they're not long enough. I mean, just, yeah, let me know what you guys think about everything. So I kind of, I haven't gotten much feedback from you guys. I mean, the majority of you really, really like what I've been doing. Um, so I don't know, I guess I'll start getting probably more advice too, like the higher I go up in subbies, like the more people that subscribe, probably the more opinions I'll get, obviously, so which makes sense and yeah, I'm fine with that so like I said any constructive criticism I gladly will listen to um, do not be mean do not be nasty because I will delete your comments and I will remove you from my channel that being said please just if you have something you need to get out and say that is constructive criticism criticism excuse me don't say it in a vulgar, mean, insulting way. There are ways to talk to people. You don't always have to go in being rude and nasty to people. That's not how you get your point across. You can still get your point across to people by talking. You get more bees with honey than vinegar. Just think of that analogy because it's true. I mean, you're not going to go to somebody expecting good feedback if you go in with an attitude I mean I was like that when I was younger I had an attitude just I hated the world I hated everybody I felt like everybody owed me something when I was young because of the life that I had to live but as I got older and I realized okay you know the issues center around you it's got to be something you're doing how you're talking to people how you're reacting to people and surely enough it was it was how I was reacting to people it was I was very defensive because of the horrible childhood I had the horrible uh even up into my adult years up until about 20 years old I had a life of misery and I'm gonna share that in um several vlogs with you guys so I don't want to go into details because I don't want to ruin the vlog series um but you'll understand why after I explain my life to you guys why I was so defensive in my life and why I went through some of the things I went through and why I reacted to them the way I did so I don't want to give away the details because I don't want to ruin the vlog series but it's definitely something that you're going to want to tune into especially if you've ever gone through anything really rough in your life which most people have some people are lucky enough to be able to say they've never um, gone through trials and tribulations or really messed up situations, which is not a bad thing. It, it, it's good that you maybe never went through anything like that, but also when you go through things like this, it just helps you be able to relate to other people. Um, there's still other things you can relate to with, however, I find that People that have gone through a lot of things in their life tend to be more understanding towards other people. Some people aren't, but most of the time they are. And it's just a different experience. You know, it's just a different thing to connect on. And I'm really excited to be bringing that series to you guys. And I know you're going to love it because it, it, it's my life story and it, it explains why I've gotten to the to the place I'm at now so if you're new here definitely hit that subscribe button um 
I know you really enjoyed the video. I mean, I hope you did because I definitely enjoyed it and I enjoyed bringing it to you guys and making it for you guys and editing it. I am so excited to be bringing you guys like a full roster of voices and different accents and like I said, acting is my first love, anything artsy, but acting for sure, like that's what I should have done with my life. I should have been in Hollywood by now, but I, I completely screwed that up. I screwed up my chances. So the next best thing is doing nails. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I love doing nails. I love it so much. And um, I'm really excited to be able to bring you guys these videos and show you what I'm capable of doing and creating. So um, just finishing up capping this nail and I will move on to the next to cap it. Um, and yeah, we'll get uh, going on the vlog soon. I'm so excited about it. I just, I really am so excited for you guys to hear um, how I grew up, where I grew up, where I went to school, how my life went into a bad direction and why and just all those things. So I'm hoping that everyone will tune in for that. I might do some of it uh, live depending on when we get to a thousand subbies. Um, so share, share, share these videos so we could get there quicker, so we could get that giveaway going, and so we can do some of our vlogs live and right here from my home so you can meet my family and friends and see my workspace and all of that. So I've actually been on YouTube now for quite a few years and I don't know exactly what I'm doing wrong, but I feel like damn I'm not at a thousand yet what am I doing wrong like am I not uploading enough am I not editing it good enough I don't know but if anyone has any suggestions please leave them in the description box or not the description box but in the comments below and I will definitely respond any advice I could get will be helpful at this point um so yeah just any, anything you guys could think of where I can take that and turn it into a better edited video, I will gladly oblige, you know. So I just finish up capping this nail and then I move on to the thumb and cap that. And then I'm going to show you some filing here. So that's what I'm doing now. I just move on to the filing. I have sped that up just so you could kind of see, get a gist of... You know, I start with the side walls, then I go to the free edge, making sure that those sides are pulled in, you know, coffin shape. Um, this particular client of mine does have like wide nail beds. So um, a lot of her nails are actually like thumb tips, not the biggest thumb tip, but like the third one down. Um, so I didn't have to use too many of my smaller tips, but so that's why they look a little bigger than normal probably just because she has a wider set nail um, and it's extremely C curved as well so which is a beautiful thing because like I said it's so many times before they make tools to get that C curve so just finishing filing here the sidewalls free edge and then I'll go in with my actual tapered medium grit carbide it, it's not a safety bit, but I'm very careful when I go around the back cuticle area. So I'll do those side walls, the free edge, and then I'll come in with that tapered medium grit carbide bit. <clears throat> Just making sure those side walls are pulled in and as flush as they could be because some of it you can't do with your hand file some of it you have to come back in and do it with your actual machine so sometimes certain areas are harder to reach with your hand file so that's why I usually just come in with the machine and get it like that so I'm changing the bit on there as you can see that's my tapered medium grit carbide bit and making sure that those side walls and the cuticle area is nice and flat and flush there is a slight kind of hill to it where it comes up 
and then comes back straight out. That's how your nails should look. Just shaping this how I want it so that when I come in with my hand file, I don't have anything to do except refining over that, you know, where I did it with my carbide bit. So literally I get my shape with this bit and then I come in and even over that surface with my hand file. So as you can see, I go under the nail around the side parts to get any kind of bits out from under there and then I go back immediately to the cuticle. Make sure that that is flush and flat as if it's growing out of the back of the nail itself and then I work on the body of the nail. You see? Getting that nice and flush and even. And then I'll come back in with the hand file over that surface. Now I go to the, the glitter nail. See, I'm under that nail. Then I come up the side wall area, making sure that all those little bits get off. And then I'll go around the side wall to the back cuticle, making sure that, first of all, my glitter is all capped, which I already made sure of that. And I will make sure now that that is flush with the cuticle area and to the point where it is as natural looking as possible you do not want a big bulky glitter nail like that's not gonna work so it's literally the same thing on every nail just making sure that back area is nice and flush and yeah and then I'll come back in like I said with my hand file and I apologize for being out of shot I thought that I was in shot this whole time and turns out I wasn't all the way so really once you start laying your acrylic a hundred percent like or almost a hundred percent properly you're not gonna have a lot of filing to do as you can see I don't have much to do I literally go under the nail come up the side get any little bits and then I come back around that back wall area and just make sure that they're neat, that they're flush, and that when I come in with my hand file, all I literally have to do is just buff those scratches and ridges out from, you know, the carbide bit. There literally is not much to do. So I'm gonna leave you here. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. And until my next one, ladies and gentlemen, I love you all so much. Hashtag more love, less hate. Hashtag the least nail designs. And on that note, bye now.